Yes, Dr. Clark, I look forward to uh, experiencing your lectures and your intellect for a long time now. I just want to ask you a quick question. Uh, you talked about some of the ante antecedents of Marcus Garvey. Uh, what interests me most is uh, some of his peers, some of the people who were around the same time as he was, namely two people, uh, James W.H. Eason and uh, Hubert H. Harrison. Uh, and could you draw some parallels between the role that Eason played in the UNIA and the role that Malcolm X played in the Nation of Islam? and compare and contrast the circumstances that led to each assassination. Well, Malcolm X don't belong in this company. Issa was literally the head of the African American branch of the God movement in the South. He was a very articulate man too handsome for his own good. And there was always some argument, some jealousy around him. He was really a better speaker than Marcus Garvey. And he organized the South for Marcus Garvey. This backbiting accusation caused him to be asked to leave the Garvey movement. And Garvey lost quite a lot in the South because of it. Eastland is a figure that deserves a book all by himself. I'm working on it. <laughs> well, I hope you do. Now, there's been a two PhD thesis on Cuban Harris. And they could be had to the University of Michigan microfilm. John Jackson, before he died, did a pamphlet on Hubert Harrison. He, he happened to have known him personally, called uh, Hubert Harrison and Black Socrates. Mm. Hubert Harrison was an independent type of person. He related to the Godly movement when he wanted to and on his own terms. And he didn't when he didn't want to. He was an independent spirit. He supported radical activities when he believed in them. And when he didn't believe in them, he walked, he walked away. He was one of the most brilliant minds to come to the United States from the Caribbean island. I've done some work on the Caribbean mind away from home. And I've devoted, devoted a great deal of time to an assessment of human Harris. And the two PhD theses that have written on it, one at Columbia, was quite helpful. I know his son, a lawyer, who died only a few years ago, William Harrison. We need to bring these people back into our lives. These were intellectual giants. We have neglected too many of our great messengers. We still don't understand what Chancellor William was saying. We never got to know Leo Hansberry. There's a whole lot. We never got to know the two great black journalists of the early 20th century, T. Thomas Fortune and William Monroe Charter. Don't think that in one lecture I can tell you all I know, all I think. I was lecturing on Marcus Garvey and his antecedents, and I didn't even do all of that, as much as I wanted to, maybe if a good man blew me here, maybe another good man might blow me back again. Thank you very much. Dr. Clark, um, as you speak about some people that we ought to try to keep in our life, um, I would like to remind this audience to keep uh, Dr. John Henry Clark's idea yes, yes, uh, I would like to just thank you for all the years of study and libraries and travel that you've done to bring this message of liberation on people. And I want to thank you and I want to thank God for you.
Yeah. Thank you, uh, I take pride in being the son of Alabama Michelle Crocker, who uh, believed in this nation that didn't believe in him. The largest sum of money he ever made one week was eighteen dollars, and he lectured me on if you persevere, if you obey the law. Look, oh boy, what you can do in this nation, $18 in one month. When I was in the army, what am my best? Make your vomit down with Khaled Abdul Muhammad. Do we got a 